The Beatles. Or Kraftwerk. It's a musical earthquake. German band Kraftwerk have been hailed the electronic Beatles. International press articles suggest that Kraftwerk may be more influential than the Beatles. This film is about Kraftwerk's mission to drag music and culture into the modern era. Join us as we go back to the future to explore the roots of the band in the German city of Dusseldorf. To me, the only question is when, where, and why. <laughs> A provocative proposition. Let's put it to the test. Doesn't what you're about to hear sound a bit like techno years before the genre really emerged? The audience didn't know how to react to the new sound. Some were enthusiastic. Others clearly bemused. Early Kraftwerk featured founding members Florian schneider Esleben on flute and Ralf Hutter on keyboards. They were German prog rockers playing experimental music known as kraut rock. In 1974, they unveiled a new, almost completely electronic sound. Autobahn was a hit around the world. Autobahn. This is where that sound was born, the Kling Klang studio. The electrician company Sign acts as a decoy for the secret location. According to legend, the only phone was to communicate with the front gate. This was the Kraftwerk Laboratory, one of the most revered spaces in music history. We met up with Rudy Esch, author of Electricity, the Dusseldorf School of Electronic Music. Autobahn is recorded with Conny Plank coming in his VW van with his mixing desk parking here, putting the cables into the studio, recording Autobahn, going back to his studio and then doing the mixing. If you remember Ralf and Florian, on the back side, that is again here. So this one room on the back side of Ralf and Florian, which is so influential to everyone in England. Mikael Wenzel and Sven Andre Dreyer are the guides on the Sound of Dusseldorf tour. They wrote a guide to the city's unique contributions to music. Kraftwerk, they say, emerged from a communal cultural scene specific to the city on the Rhine. But Dusseldorf's most famous musicians shut themselves off to rethink music from the ground up. They just wanted to create new sounds and they defined new sounds by uh, using synthesizers. I was not a good violinist and only a moderate flute player. And a synthesizer, if you have a bit of intuition or you let things happen, it can be a very flexible and pliable instrument. Then they said, OK, this comes from the American people, this comes from the British people, but we should develop something on our own. Um, they developed a new sound that uh, was blinking, shrinking, bleaking, peeping. They are not influenced by anyone. They don't pick up any music they like and make a mishmash or anything. No, it's like, I mean, they're sitting there like Thomas Mann. They only have pages and a pen, okay? But they have the imagination. They, they can come up with a great album and they are only in their own circle. All those creatures' sounds were very, very important to create a future sound because uh, there were no footprints in the snow and they were the first musicians uh, using those instruments. And the Fab Four? 
The Beatles didn't really create a new sound on their own. They were part of a movement of beat groups playing blues-based rock that built on the work of black US artists. This round has to go to Kraftwerk. Kraftwerk actually developed new instruments themselves. They built and commissioned the various elements they needed for their new sound, including DIY drum pads. Early examples were more primitive looking than futuristic. Robot vocals became their trademark sound. The success of Autobahn provided the necessary capital to forge ahead of the competition. They had the money to afford big studios and uh, high-tech equipment to realize the, their vision of sound, what modern music should sound like. And also this, until today, makes them timeless. No one knew by the time that Wolfgang was like playing his self-made drum kit that this will be the top future for everyone, that it's a cool thing to, play, to play electric drums. Kraftwerk couldn't wait to embrace new technology, so they created their own. And what about the Beatles? They too liked to experiment. They sped up vocals and played sounds backwards. But this was the exception rather than the rule. Round two to Kraftwerk. By the mid 70s, Kraftwerk were a four man band. Ralph and Florian had been joined by classically trained Karl Bartosz and former beat band drummer Wolfgang Fluhr. They buy the equipment and they know we have to come up with something that is totally our own thing. But then they need help. So they asked Wolfgang if he wants to be the drummer because he was the good looking guy. He looked great and he could play. And he loved Ringo Starr. So he plays simple and just the beat. And Karl is a real trained and studied musician. Okay, that is a smart move to hire Karl. We stood in a kind of circle, Florian, Ralph and me, usually a triangle, and improvised, like jazz musicians. We looked at each other, fell about laughing and then recorded it. The third aspect, to do pop music uh, with yeah, new sounds, danceable pop music, for example, like the model. Wolfgang and Karl had those um, lovely uh, rhythm sections. The sound on its own is very romantic. You get uh, the glimpse of the eternal beauty of the model walking down the strip, walking down the Königsallee. Autobahn and the model were big hits. They proved that Kraftwerk's electronic folk music had mass appeal and ensured that their future sounds went around the world. Let's get back to the Beatles, pioneers of perfect pop with multiple iconic hits. Before the Beatles, artists recorded songs written by professional songwriters. The Beatles wrote their own material and inspired thousands of young people to form bands, including, by the way, both Carl and Wolfgang from Kraftwerk. Round three to the Beatles. <laughs> Kraftwerk were heavily influenced by Dusseldorf's vibrant art and design scene. Emil Schultz is often referred to as the fifth Kraftwerk member. He was largely responsible for the visuals, creating much of the cover art. Schultz studied at the Dusseldorf Art Academy under Gerhard Richter and Fluxus artist Josef Beuys. Many artists from the Art Academy had a huge influence on music. Kraftwerk were in the scene of uh, young students around the academy. So they had big and huge influences uh, of arts. They were uh, friends to, um, for example, um, very important artists from Dusseldorf. We come from the late 60s art scene in Dusseldorf and have always been a combination of visual arts, music, sound, poetry. Our music has always been a living performance. Now we're here 
at Berger Allee number 9. In 1974, the ground floor was rented by Ralph Hütter as a shared apartment for members of the band. For example, the percussionists Wolfgang Flür and Karl Bartos lived there, and also Emil Schuld, the artist. They had a commune there. Kraftwerk were inspired by the art and activism of the 1960s. Florian Schneider Esleben, seen here at an exhibition with his father and sisters, came into contact with the art world at an early age. His mother, Eva Maria, was a poet. His father, Paul Schneider Esleben, a renowned architect who designed Cologne Airport and left his mark on the Dusseldorf skyline. We're now here at Berger Allee 25 and there's this wonderful building which uh, was the center of Mannesmann and uh, this building, very futuristic, was built up by uh, and designed by the father of Florian Schneider Esleben from Kraftwerk, Paul Schneider Esleben. And uh, he was a very famous architect, uh, very uh, futuristically thinking, a modernist, yeah? and uh, he built up this building quite at the River Rhine. In 2012, Kraftwerk played at the Museum of Modern Art in New York, confirming their status as art and music pioneers. This is a group of artists who consistently worked in the field of tension between man and machine, who in their work, in the visualization, in performances, have increasingly replaced themselves with robots. The concerts were a critical success. The visuals were incredible. I mean, I've seen them once before, but not in the 3D like that. It's unbelievable. I just love the music. I love the, the space. I love the... Um, they just look great. I mean, they've been around since the 1970s, and they looked awesome. It was much more than I expected, and uh, it was wonderful. Kraftwerk's entire oeuvre was beginning to be seen as a single work of art. But the Beatles were no art philistines either. John Lennon was an art student and teamed up with Fluxus artist Yoko Ono for art happenings. Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band was a concept album, cover courtesy of pop artist Peter Blake. But the Beatles dabbled in art without turning themselves into a unique Gesamt Kunstwerk. Kraftwerk's music workers take the round. Listen carefully, the word correct is a sample. A Dusseldorf waiter lent his voice to the track. Kraftwerk were early adopters of sampling. Sampling exploded in the 1980s. When it did, Kraftwerk's recordings became a toolkit for producers creating new tracks. Africa Bambata clearly borrowed from Trans Europa Express. Suddenly, everyone was dancing like robots. From this... to this. Kraftwerk brought the funk with machines and computers. They might not have thought they were doing funk, but they were doing funk. If you listen to the um, records from the early 80s, um, and the, the late 70s, you listen to very, very um, cool rhythms, rhythm sections. And that's the platform, the blueprint for techno. Um, the Americans um, used those drum patterns to create that sound. Uh, they just put in the loops and then you have techno. If the use of snippets of a band's work to create wholly new genres is the currency, then Kraftwerk surely have the edge. But in terms of covers and cover bands, the Beatles are streets ahead. They are actually also way ahead of Kraftwerk in terms of numbers of samples. So this final round goes to the Beatles. The final result, the Beatles 2, Kraftwerk, Three.
Could Kraftwerk really be bigger than the Beatles? The band's influence extends beyond hip-hop and techno to disco, electro-funk and new wave industrial. It can be heard on David Bowie's Berlin Trilogy albums. What I was passionate about in relation to Kraftwerk was their singular determination to stand apart from stereotypical American chord sequences and their wholehearted embrace of a European sensibility. Giorgio Moroder was clearly inspired by Kraftwerk. By the 1980s, in the music of British synth pop groups like Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark, New Order, and Depeche Mode, the influence of Kraftwerk is self evident. For anyone in our generation involved in electronic music, Kraftwerk were the godfathers. Coldplay used the melody from Computer Love. To begin with, they were a band I didn't quite get. Then suddenly, one day, it clicked, and it was the best music I'd ever heard. Let's leave the last word to our friends in Dusseldorf. Are Kraftwerk more influential than the Beatles? Because of using all those instruments like synthesizers, and all the pop stars today use synthesizers to uh, compose their music, could be that Kraftwerk is more influential than the Beatles. I think uh, both are pop and uh, even Kraftwerk like the Beatles. And you couldn't say that one band of them is more influential than the other. Uh, the Beatles stayed with uh, classical instruments. Kraftwerk just took another way. They went into the electronic sound of pop. They created electropop. They are more influential because they really created something brand new and very German. What do you think when it comes to a new sound, artistic vision and leaving a lasting cultural legacy? Do Kraftwerk rival the Beatles' influence? Is there more Kraftwerk or more Beatles in today's chart and club music? Tell us what you think in the comments. And... Subscribe.